In this video we're going to look at inequalities that require multi-step, so we'll do these two examples in this pa on page one here. <coughs> so please write the first one down. It's 0 0.2 times a minus 3 in parentheses is greater than or equal to negative 1.4. Okay. So this is just like solving an equation with multi-steps. Um, the first thing we do is the distributive property wherever we can see it. Okay. The second thing we do is we add like terms or simplify both sides uh, wherever we can find like terms on both sides. Okay. And the third thing we do is we solve. So I, uh, I'm not writing out complete sentences to say that we have to do the distributive property in, in all the different places that it, it happens. We add like terms on both sides of the equation before we add or subtract to both sides of the equation and then we solve the equation. So I'm just, this is your shorthand, but, but it's so you just have to remember distributive property, add like terms, solve. There are the three steps. Okay. So the first step is distributive property, so we gotta multiply 0 0.2 times a and then 0 0.2 times negative 3, okay? So what is 0 0.2 multiplied by a? Can you write that down? Okay, would that be 0 0.2 a, right? How about 0 0.2 times negative 3? Is that going to be a positive number or a negative number? It's going to be negative, right? What about 3 times 0 0.2? What's 3 times 2? 3 times 2 is 6, so that's 0 0.6, right? So we've applied the distributive property, now we just write out the rest of the inequality. Okay, there you go. Do we have any like terms that we can add or subtract on, on either side of the of the inequality? No. So we did the distributive property. There's no like terms to add or subtract. Now we just solve it. Okay. So by all means, go ahead and solve that yourself. Try to go faster than me. You're solving for a. A is being multiplied by 0 0.2, and then 0 0.6 is being subtracted. So you've got to undo subtracting 0 0.6. You've got to add 0 0.6 to both sides okay okay so negative 0 0.6 plus 0 0.6 that's 0 and then on the left we have 0 0.2 a still is greater than or equal to and then add these guys together what do you get take your time what's 14 minus 6 just think what is 14 minus 6 14 minus 6 is 8. So just write down the number 8. Okay. Now hold on a second. This is 1.4. Uh, we're, we're, we're getting a negative 1.4 and a positive 0 0.6. So, so you just subtract them and you would get, in fact, not 8 but 0 0.8. Right? But it's a negative 1.4 and a positive 1.6. So that's more of a negative, a bigger negative than a smaller positive. So, so the answer is a negative 0 0.8. Okay. So we have 0 0.a, 0 0.2a is greater than or equal to negative 0 0.8. And to get a by itself, what do you do? What's a been multiplied by? So a has been multiplied by 0 0.2, so you need to divide by 0 0.2 on both sides. Okay. So if you divide both sides by 0 0.2, not 0 0.2a. For goodness sakes, hopefully by now, I hope you guys are not dividing by 0.2a. If you divided by a, the a's would cross cancel. You do, don't do that. You're dividing by 0.2. So please write this down. You're dividing by 0.2. So if you cross cancel, 0.2 into 0.2 goes one time. You've got 1 over 1a one or just 1a. Look, there's just an a there by itself. There's no a on the bottom. Just a. Okay, just 1a. Okay. So you have a and what do we have on the right hand side? It's negative over positive. So 0 0.8 over 0 0.2 is kind of like asking how many 0 0.2's do you add together to get uh, 0 0.8? Okay, how many 20 cents 
make up 80 cents? How many amounts of 20 cents make up 80 cents? Okay, so the answer is 4. You could also multiply this by 10 over 10 if you want to. See, 0 0.8 times 10 is 8. 0 0.2 times 10 is 2. And so that gives you 8 over 2, which is 4. But of course, that's a negative over a positive, so that's a negative 4. Okay. Now we divided both sides by a positive number. Do we need to change the direction of the inequality? Do you need to change the direction? No, because you divided by a positive, so it stays like that. A is greater than or equal to negative 4, right? And on a number line, here's what it looks like in a number line. Here's a number line, zero is in the middle, okay? It goes to positive infinity and negative infinity, so we just draw that, okay? Negative 4, here's negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4 is here. Greater than or equal to negative 4. Okay, that would be negative 3, negative 2, or negative 1, or 0, or 1, 2, 3, these numbers. These are greater than. And negative 4 is also included, because it's greater than or equal to. And all the numbers in between as well. All these numbers, all the way towards positive infinity. Okay, And you would use the square bracket to show that negative 4 is included. Okay. So that's what it looks like on a number line, right? Okay, so take this one down. 0 0.5 times 4 minus 2x is less than negative 6. By all means, try to solve it. Press pause. Try to solve it by yourself and then check the video. Okay, I hope you press pause and tried it. I'm going to go over it now. So the first step, it's just like solving equations like this. You do the distributive property, you add like terms if you can, and then solve. Okay. So we've got to multiply both multiply in with 0.5. Okay. 0 0.5 times 4. Just think to yourself, what's 5 times 4? You can do this over here if you want. I mean 0 0.5 times 4, right? What's 4 times 5? 4 times 5 is 20, okay? And there's one decimal place in the question, so there should be one decimal place in the answer, so 2.0, okay? So you get 2.0, or just 2, and then this is a positive times a negative, which gives negative, and then we have 0 0.5 times 2x. And you might want to do 0 0.5 times 2 and see what you get. In fact, you might do that in your head. What's 0 0.5 times 2, anyway? 2.5 times 2. Well, it's just 1, isn't it? 2 fives is 10. One decimal place in the question, so there should be 1 in the answer, and that's 1.0, or 1, right? Anyhow, this should be 1x. And then you just write out the rest of the equation. Does that make sense? <laughs> or the inequality, rather. Now the question is, what do you do? We don't have any like terms to add or subtract on both sides, so or, or, or on you know. Uh, anyway, all we can do now is solve the equation, right? I mean, the, I'm just saying there's there's only one x term over here, right? So can't add like terms on the left hand side or anything. So anyway, we got to solve it from here. So what do we do? Got to subtract two from both sides, right? 2 minus 2 is 0, and what are you left with on both sides of the, of the inequality? Write down what you get on both sides. On the left, you don't get 1x. That's not correct. You get negative 1x, or negative x. Okay. What do you get on the right-hand side? Negative 6 minus 2. In debt, $6, subtract $2, what, what happens? You're in debt by eight dollars, right? Now you subtracted from both sides, so what way should the inequality sign go? And in fact, I'm just going to do a quick summary of this situation. So just I'm going to. There's a reason why we change the inequality sign when we do. Okay, 
So really quickly, here's negative 4, here's positive 10. 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 Okay? Negative 4 is obviously less than positive 10. Okay? When I add something to both sides, what happens? Pick a number, any number. Here's 3, the number 3. When I add 3 to both sides, I get negative 1 on the left, and what do you get on the right? 13. Which way should the inequality sign go? It stays the same. When you add to both sides, inequality stays the same. What happens when you subtract something from both sides? Pick a number, any number. Subtract something from both sides. You can pick anything. How about uh, 20? Subtract 20 from both sides. Negative 4 minus 20? Negative 24. 10 minus 20? Negative 10. Which way should the inequality sign go? Negative 24 is lesser, so it should go like that. It's a lesser number, and negative 10 is, in fact, a greater number. So when you subtract from both sides, the inequality sign stays the same direction. How about when you divide by a positive? Let's divide by a positive 2, because it goes into both numbers. Divide by a positive 2, what do you get? What do you get in the left? Negative 4 over 2 gives you negative 2. What's 10 over 2? 10 over 2 is 5. Which way should the inequality sign go? Stays the same. So we divide by a positive, it stays the same. What about when we divide by a negative on both sides? What happens? What do you get in the left? Negative over negative. Positive. 4 over 2. Positive 2. What about on the right hand side? That's a positive over negative. What is that? Positive over negative? Gives a negative. 10 over 2. 5. Which way should the inequality sign go? The inequality sign changes direction. So it only changes direction when we divide by a negative, and that's the only time. Okay? So because of this, we can say that it's when we divide by a negative. Divide by a negative, change direction of the inequality. Okay? So really, in these in these um, examples, we're looking at two. First of all, we're doing distributive property, add like terms, and then solving. And it's in solving that we watch out for dividing by a negative number. That's when we change direction. Okay? Only when we're dividing by a negative. So, so that's the trick. So I just press, I pause this question. I'm going back to this question now. I just want to make sure. When we subtract from both sides, the inequality stays the same direction. Subtracting from both sides is fine. We subtracted 20 here, and the inequality stayed the same direction. Okay. It's just when you divide by a negative that you change, or you, you change it. So it's fine to add, subtract, or divide by a positive. Just watch out for dividing by a negative. And that always happens at the end. So you're fine, really, until the very last step. Because now we've got negative 1 times x. So how do we get x out by itself? We need to divide by negative 1. And what do we do to this side? Divide by negative 1, right? I'm dividing by a negative. What do I get on the left, si left side? I get just positive x, right? And on the right, positive. That's a negative over negative, positive 8. I divided by a negative. What way should the inequality sign go? It should go the opposite direction. Okay? So x is greater than 8 is the answer. And on a number line, here's a number line. 
zeros in the middle, positive infinity up here, negative infinity down there. Okay, where's eight? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we've got x is greater than eight. So x could be nine or 10 or 11. These numbers are greater than eight, right? Or 12. It could be theoretically something like 8.00001, okay? But not eight. Okay, so it's any decimal number like, like 8.2 or 8.5, any of these guys. It could be any of these guys in here. Or it could be, you know, in fact, 9.5 or 10.5 or 11.5. So it's, it's all of these numbers. So that's why we fill in the number line here, okay, and we give it an arrow in that direction. That's all these numbers, but not including 8. And that's why we use the parentheses to show it's not including 8. Okay. So we need a parenthesis, parenthesis here on the eight. Okay.